This is Moneyline Mania with Chaz and the crew. Chazzy Moto and his boy Wes. What's going on, guys? Cash and tickets, baby. Cash and tickets, as always. You guys are the best of the best. We're going to be doing something on our website where you can actually check out some of their prop bets and their parlays. And we're going to give you guys an opportunity every single week, every single month, every single year to make money off their picks, which they're the best of the best. So, Chaz, are you ready? Well, you know, it's funny because if you're not following us on Worldwide Sports Radio Network, Thursday nights, 8 o'clock New York time, then you're, you're probably really ahead of the curve here, Wes, wouldn't you think? I would think so. You say it best. You watch the show. You do what you're told. You get paid. I'm not a prop better, and I don't bet on my picks. Everybody comes to me and they say, hey, Errol, what do you have? I was at physical therapy, and I was talking to my physical therapist. And he pulls out his phone, DraftKings. He's like, does Matthew Stafford have 300 yards? Does Odell Beckham score a touchdown? Does Jamar Chase? And I'm looking around. I'm like, I'll give you some of my thoughts, but if you don't win, don't blame it on me. That's why I don't bet on it. I'm curious. Wes, those three right there. I try and stay away from the yardage because that's unpredictable. I like the anytime touchdowns because Fred is around 48 48- so, so that's about six or seven touchdowns. So you got to think it's rare for somebody to score more than two. So I look for the value within those. So I, I won't touch anything that's less than minus 175. For Cooper Cup to score a touchdown, it's minus 190. Not necessarily any value there. I do think Beckham will score a touchdown. I don't think Stafford needs to put up that type of yardage in order for the Rams to find success. I would go under on that Stafford play. And I don't know, you said 330, 340, something like that. I don't think. I don't think he needs to breach three in order for them to find success. Do you think Joe Burrow and Matthew Stafford could have over 300 yards in this game? I think these defenses are too good. A lot's to be said about the Rams and their personnel and the moves they made in the Von Miller acquisition, but there's not enough talk about how good that Bengals defense actually is and the turnovers they forced and the big moments. So, yeah, it's possible, but a lot will have to break down. It's not a slam dunk that Mm -hmm. that that happened. You know what my favorite part of the Super Bowl is? When you got a guy that's 67 yards, this is total. There's no time left. They're like on their own 20 and they're running out the clock and he takes it and everybody's, they're back in the prevent and he gets like 40 yards before halftime. It doesn't matter. He's not going to score. You were never threatened, but you got 40 of your yards in one play in garbage time for the first half. I like when that happens. Garbage time betting and garbage time fantasy football. Something that can win and lose individual matchups. How about you guys? Do you guys think Mixon could score a touchdown this game? You know what? I'm going to tell you right now. When I was in Vegas, I remember a very much of of Saturday, a little bit of Sunday, none of Sunday night, but a little bit of Sunday. And I had Mixon and I had Kelsey and then I had Samuel and I had Cup score the first touchdown. Cup was 11 to 2. And I hit him, and I made him my big play because he was the lowest odds of all four of those. But if I like Mixon then, I could bet Mixon again. Do you think any of the tight ends have touchdowns in this game? Higby's not playing. That was what we had talked about on Thursday night is if you believe that a tight end scores a touchdown, and I believe this is the best value on the board. Higby's been ruled out. He's not playing. Yes. So then you go to the two tight ends that are starting. you got Blanton and Ozama. They're plus 225 and plus 275. All you need is a tight end to score a touchdown, and you've paid Paid for both, plus get a little bit of juice after that. So if you're looking at roughly a 20% profit, now if they both score, that's even better. But even further than that, with Higby out, I still think that they're going to need the tight end. The Rams are still going to need some play out of the tight end, but there's no guarantee that it's going to Blanton. So if you were to look at Hopkins, he's plus 900. There's real value on investing in the tight ends here to score a touchdown at any point. How about you, Chas? I've been, been the first player to score at Super Bowls for a long, long time because we are right now, right smack in the middle of the championshipfootballs.com 72-hour Super Bowl 56 pre-sale extravaganza. <laughs> Both your Cincinnati or your Rams footballs at an incredible like half price almost. But that's who I root for, whoever I sell the more pre-sales, because I got to give the other people their money back. So when you have the first player to score over the years that I've had, I've had some great stories. But it's so wild because if they're on the 30, it ain't going to be a tight end. But if we're on the 7 or 8, it could be almost anybody. And it really is. It's the only time I think ever in sports betting that I'll get up in pace because it's usually 5 to 1, and I usually have a lot of money on it. There was a prop bet on DraftKings. Joe Mixon is the first player on the Bengals to make a catch. 
catch. Do you think Joe Mixon is the first person to catch the ball for the Bengals? If I'm a coach and I got a quarterback, how many times did he get sacked, Pete? Yeah, that one nine game? times. Just against Tennessee. I'm thinking, yeah, I want to ease him into the game. I'm not going to have him throw a slant. Jamar Chase 45 yards down the field, though they probably could. Those two in their sleep probably have a higher completion rate than most tandems. But no, that totally makes sense. And I did see the prop on would his first pass be a completion. Well, you know what? If you're throwing a little out of your running back, a little thing out of the backfield, that's a 98% completion rate. If you think that's possible, that's how they're going to start the game. That's a great prop there, right, Wes? I don't hate it. Burrow does not have the best offensive line. And early in the game, they're going to want to get a couple easy completion to establish a rhythm, get the Rams sweating a little bit. So I could see that happening. But it just depends on what is your goal in tomorrow's game. Is your goal to have some fun and have a lottery ticket? Or are you trying to win a few percent and build your bankroll? And whatever the answer to that is, you know, that's your risk appetite. As you guys know, we're a money line mania with uh, Chaz and the crew. But what do we talk about here all the time is if you're just betting the game and that's it, you're not really a sports better. You're gambling is mm. what you're doing. When the guys from 151 Sports Investing and GMF Sports Consultants. That's not what we do. We look at what we think is going to happen and then sooner or later, right away, you're right. So if you're looking at your props, like Wes said, if you're just there to have fun, who cares? Bet heads, bet Gatorade purple, whatever you want to do, it's your money, man. But if you're there to make some money on this game, you have to say to yourself, what do I think is going to happen? You have to bet that accordingly. If you like the Rams and over, or if you like Cincinnati and under, your props should reflect that. But you got to be ready to be wrong. That is where I would say, Wes, would you agree that's where we are heads and shoulders above anybody else when it comes to sports betting is when we were wrong. It is, but we're also not afraid to jump to the other side. We've switched directions so many times just to right a wrong, or even bigger than that is when we get that first cash of the game, how we tiptoe into that next piece of action in the game and keeping ourselves in the green. Errol, remember that time I joined you when I was in Houston for that show? Yes. We mm-hmm. got Jamar Chase's autograph. How cool was that an investment? That'll be but great for championship footballs. And I remember it only because Wes, what happened? happened is we got back to the room you know if you've ever been at a trade show your feet are killing and you're standing up for 12 14 hours and i had a college game i was in your time zone i wasn't used to being that early the games are still going you know out here the games are all over and so i had a game where i took plus 12 with one team and minus 10 with the other whatever the middle was my son goes what are you doing i said i just think this is a good play and it landed at six I hit both bets. So I had the team that lost and the team that won. I catch both tickets, and that's what we do. I got a curveball for you. Henderson will be back in this game. Does Henderson have more yards than Akers and Michelle? And I believe he will because that's a curveball. You haven't seen him on the field. I think they could use him a lot in this game because I think he's a beast up the middle. I think if that happens, you're going to know right away. When a guy hasn't played and he comes in, first of all, if he fumbles, that's it. He ain't coming back in the game. Right. And that's the worst thing, right? If you got to run it back and he fumbles early because they just don't give him the ball again. I agree with you. Henderson is a dual threat. I think he's better than both running backs that the Rams have. I think he's better than Michelle. He's better than Akers. So we'll know early. But the unfortunate thing is these prop bets go away when the game starts. There's very few live over-unders on players. Henderson is not an option for an anytime touchdown score. I would imagine if and when it hits the board, we're going to be looking at plus 300-ish just because it'll be assumed that he's going to be the number three. But I really like that Henderson call out. How about McPherson? Does McPherson miss his first field goal throughout the playoffs? He didn't miss one. Indoors, L.A. weather, no humidity. Mm. It depends on the distance. Is that a prop? Because if that's a prop, the odds got to be whack. Probably have to take a block at this rate. <laughs> if it is a prop, i definitely bet on it. Yeah, are you still <laughs> looking at those anytime touchdowns? Because Speedy had asked about the tackle eligible guy is yes yeah i'm staring at the anytime touchdowns that's really my main approach i'm looking for the anytime touchdowns i'm looking to go two out of six that pays me as if i went four out of six that's the approach if i can make 20 percent out of it you know that would be a great year a great decade in your 401k if you went 20 30 percent so mainly anytime touchdowns oh you know me if i at the end of the day my book says i got a dollar more in my pocket heck in vegas i don't even need to win I do the formula of how much would I have spent on those drink tickets, how much did I win or lose, and as long as I'm even, guys, we had to have, we were at the Strat, they treated us so well, we had to have at one point 
a hundred drink tickets because there was six of us at one point and we were the only ones really talking and, and tipping and stuff so they're giving you four and five drinks every time you're making a bet and i was betting the pegasus stakes Wes. i was betting every single race every 30 minutes i'm back at the window so even if you lose a hundred bucks but you got a hundred drinks where are you gonna get a drink for a dollar if it ain't a strip club you know <laughs> here's a question does the rams have the lead going into the second half there's a play that I was looking at earlier, and I was looking at, not the first half, but I was looking at the Q1 shutout win. So if you were to take the Rams for a shutout win, think about that. That's 7 to nothing. That's 3 to nothing. That's not a crazy blowout. The Rams to have a shutout win in the first quarter is plus 190. If you like the Bengals to just be ahead 3 to nothing or have any form of a lead, it's plus 425. So I think the Rams probably will have the lead at half, but just a spinoff on what you brought up, that Q1 shutout win, just a field goal and nothing else by somebody. When you bet that first quarter, guys, and, and again, think about it. You got 10 sports bettors in a room, Errol. How many are betting the first quarter? With the way it's going now, everybody. I know that's not true, but more than half of them do not. I guarantee more than half of them do not. And the reason is, it's because it's just too intense. Mm. The first quarter is too intense because now it goes all the way back to, do they defer, right? Right. If you get Cincinnati anytime and the Rams win the toss and they defer because they want to put their defense out there and Cincinnati gets a field goal, that's what? Plus 400, you said? Think about Cincinnati that. having a shutout win is plus 420. What's the number Four. if this game goes to overtime? That is a good question. And what's interesting there is Cincinnati – has gone to overtime four times this season, including one in the playoffs. Mm -hmm. And out of 17 games, so what's it? That's right around 30% of their games end up in overtime. I like that play, too, and I'll look for what the payoff is on there. And they won, I think, four others on game-winning field goals. <laughs> yeah. I'm leaning to make one of my bets a plus 230 bet, and that's the Rams minus 12 and a half. So I'm probably not betting it's going overtime. You know what's so interesting with these bets now? People are trying to look for that parlay in the game, and, and there's so many ways to do it. If you were to look right now at DraftKings or you look at your book right now, give us a parlay that you would think would work for the fans. You're talking about any time touchdown parlays? Any parlay. Like, let's say Mixing has a touchdown, Burroughs throws over 300 yards, McPherson has two field goal kicks. When I'm looking at a parlay, and it's funny because Mo from the Mo Radio Show, who we would love to have on, but he's really, really busy. Tough to, to get him time in front of a camera. He's picked up, because I used to be on his show, and I would do those first touchdowns of the Super Bowl. So he, when he got legal where he is, he started doing them, and those parlays are pretty, pretty profitable. But when I bet parlays, I'm used to doing what I do in soccer, where I don't think it's a possibility that this can lose, but I'm looking to double my money. I need three things to happen, but I double my money. Normally, three things happen. You get six to one. But it's a hard way to make six to one. When three things like mine, you know, you get a two minus two twenties. You mentioned cup is a minus one ninety. Like if I like cup and I like chase, right, right mm -hmm. there. If I put that parlay together, all of a sudden I'm getting probably even money, a little less than even money. I add one more, maybe a mix in. I don't think it would be a mix in though, because he hasn't scored. If I was going to add a third guy to that, I would go with Beckham. I would go Beckham. I know you said you didn't think he was going to score, mm -mm. but I would go Beckham because Beckham's a big time player. Big-time players do big-time things in big-time games. He's definitely a, a unique bird, but remember, he was on the Giants, and he did things on the Giants. The Giants stink, Wes, right? The Giants are not a very good football organization. I, I wish they were because there's a lot of fans in New York that contribute. Yeah, to I know. Least. When the Giants are good, they're just not. The same thing with the Jets, but I agree with you with the Cooper Cup. I think you throw Cooper Cup into that parlay, and then for some odds, I like Tyler Boyd. There's a lot of value on this man scoring a touchdown. He didn't show up in Arrowhead last week because he didn't need to, but I think it was the Tennessee game where Burrow found him in weird scrambling Spots. recess in the playground type of scenarios. So Tyler Boyd is plus 225, so you throw that in there with the Cooper Cup, and then I think you probably throw a field goal prop in there, but I like Joe Burrow for over. It's 11 or 12 rush yards, depending on where you go. If the Bengals are going to win, Joe Burrow will have to do something with his legs, so I am not a parlay person, but what I will say is if you wanted to put the parlay together, I would take the Boyd touchdown, I would take the Cup touchdown, and then take the Burrow over the 11 or 12, whatever it is. I think Burrow's going to rush for about 15 or 20. But you take that, you put them together, and bet them individually. Bet your standard 
unit, your your one dollar on each one of them, and then go maybe bet ten cents mm. on the parlay. Because the worst thing with the parlay is that you've created a loss instead of a big win. Three and one is a great day. That's a great day anywhere. But on a four teamer. Loser. <laughs> hey, you know what, Boyd? Listen to this. He scored week fifteen. He scored week sixteen. He scored week seventeen.